thankful for the way these stories hold on to the lifetime we won't give back. I know these rivers carry And welcome to Kankakee Podcast, where we talk about the people and places of Kankakee County. I'm Jake Lamore, and today we are joined by uh, someone who is very, very prominent in our community. And uh, I'm thankful and honored to have known her, I, th- I feel like almost since you showed up to town, <laughs> to the county, right? It I is, mean, yeah, probably 10 years, maybe. Um, well, when when you first uh, so let's welcome Stacy Wilkin of the, the <laughs> first Stacy Wilkin from the uh, Kankakee County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, when you arrived to Mantino, didn't is that when you started working at the chamber? Yeah, uh, the Mantino Chamber right away. Yeah, my son and I had lived in Mantino since I think two thousand eight, and then um, in two thousand thirteen, the opportunity came up with the village and the, the chamber of commerce there in Mantino. And I took it. So that 2013 is when I kind of came on the professional scene in, in Kankakee County. Wow. I thought it was before that. I thought, it, I thought you were going to tell me it was like 2009, 2010. No, time flies when we're having fun, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> it really <laughs> does. So, um, so you move to, to Mantino in 2008. Where, where did you move from? Yeah, I grew up in Anarga, so just about 30 minutes south of here when, you know, Iroquois West, alma mater. Um, and then I, I kind of, we kind of worked our way through the West suburbs for a couple of years just to experiment, see if that was what our jam was. And then um, ended up in Mantino when my son was going into first grade and um, he graduated this past spring. So now he's off and running to college and yeah, so it's been a great, great time. I guess I completely forgot that you came from the South and not the North, because that's always usually the uh, the factor when people are, are uh, uh, you know, uh, moving yeah. to to the county. It's usually from the North. Yeah, so. I was still commuting downtown at that time. So I was... Oh, wow. So Mantino... To Chicago? Yeah. From Mantino or yep. from Onarga? From Mantino. Oh, okay. um, so it was great to... It was a perfect compromise for our family um, being close to my parents, and then um, at the time, my sister lived in Mantino, so it was just a great opportunity for J- to be close. Jam- to- Jamie's your sister, right? Jamie's my sister. Jamie um, McElroy. Yep, Jamie yes. and her husband Eric, and um, then I have another sister, Kylie, who actually just also um, within the last couple of years moved to Mantino. Okay, with her two little ones. And oh, then, that's uh, wonderful. Yeah. Then I got my my brother Cody, who is the who's the baby of the family, so <laughs> he's back home. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was, I've met your sister, Jamie. She's wonderful, an amazing graphic designer, wonderful woman. Um, I've never met uh, okay, Callie? Kylie. You, Kylie. Yeah, Kylie. I've never met Kylie. We are, we're actually all kind of in that marketing um, creative sphere. Are you so really? Kylie does um, marketing for an ag implement company based out of Gibson City, and she um, is in design and marketing and and really great stuff in that in that agricultural um, industry too. So. That's yeah, the big. That's a big thing. It is. Um, it's definitely not my thing. But uh, we could sp- <laughs> we could speak the same language, just different uh, adjectives. <laughs> it's 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 interesting how you all kind of wound up, you know, the because th- it's it's what three sisters and then yeah, just the then one our brother. brother. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's funny because my son is actually now going into business and uh, focusing on marketing and <laughs> and being an entrepreneur. So I'm like, okay, we know this. He we, grew up around it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. You always say you don't want to grow up and be your parents, you know. But uh, <laughs> s- some areas of 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 my professional life do shine through. So I'm just it's, it's a cool journey that he's starting right now. So yeah, yeah. I didn't become a farmer, you know, like my dad did. But I guess I took more along the sides of my mom and. A little bit, you know, coming from the print shop and yeah. things well, I, like actually, that. Yeah, actually, I think, 
That is how we met. But again, that is how it was, we met. Yeah. Um, so that so, was still 2013 or so when I was with Oktoberfest. And... Yeah, almost 10 years ago. Um, mm-hmm. But so you you became the executive director of the Mantino Chamber of Commerce in 2013. And yeah, that's around the time that we had met because I was working at my my family's print shop, Weber mm-hmm. Printing. So you were always coming in to get stuff printed for either Oktoberfest or the chamber. And then also at that time, I was on the chamber committee as well. So I would see you there. Yeah. It's funny um, looking back in the rear view of of friendships that we've grown over the years and how we did meet. But, you know, I remember walking into the print shop always and, you know, I didn't know anybody. I really, outside of my personal circle, um, before I worked in the community, I didn't really know anybody. And uh, walking into the print shop was always like, um, it was so cozy. You know, just the relationship with the, your grandfather and um, just, they were so kind. And um, it was just a really, it was a really cool, just opportunity to meet them. Well, thank you. That that means a lot. I always felt like my, my yeah, my grandfather was the the warm the warmth of the the company of the business. Mm-hmm. You know, he always had that uh twinkle in his eye. He still does has the twinkle You're in right. his eye. He you did know? have a twinkle. <laughs> um and he always was genuinely interested in in me, you know, um yeah. how was I doing and um it wasn't just a transaction. It was a it was a relationship. And I think that's something our world needs more of today. Yeah, you know? he's always very curious as to what people are doing with their business or what they need things for. And I know to this day, like when uh, we, we were in the process of, of selling uh, equipment at the print shop in the last year, um, I was kind of the, the person that oversaw getting the equipment sold because it it really really all the transactions took place online you know Mm -hmm. we put stuff on ebay or on facebook and things like that and so when i would sell something he would ask well what are they going to be using it for i'm like well i didn't you know like i didn't didn't ask like i didn't ask all (laughs) like you know i felt like it was just very like personal to ask but he's just like you know he he genuinely just he just wants to he's Mm -hmm. just curious and wants to know he probably really wanted to know how he was helping and serving you know passing on something that is his life's work too so i could i could totally see that story he wanted to dig into a little bit yeah no Uh, that's that's true online sales don't quite get that far in the relationship do they (laughs) not always but i tell you we met some really interesting people and learned some uh, just some fascinating stories. I know one of the uh, the the big uh, commercial cutter we sold um, that that would cut our big sheets of paper down to like you know mm-hmm. letter size oh, yeah. eight and a half I by eleven. I remember watching that. that yeah, was so cool. Your grandpa ch- showed me how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he probably showed you literally you know everything in in, uh, in that did. back room. Yep, he did. Um, so the person we sold our our big cutter to works for a company in Minnesota that literally all they do is sell supplies to people that homeschool. No kidding. Yeah, all huh. the 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 learning materials yeah. as far I have a know. friend in Minnesota who homeschools. Oh, okay. I, I've seen her social media um promote that whole um, homeschool community. And it's so incredible, I have to say. Yeah. So that like, literally, that's all this guy's company does. Mm-hmm. And I thought find that a w- niche and go and Yeah. So I thought, forward. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh-huh. You know, another guy uh, who bought our, um, our linotype machine, which is how you'd make your letters for your letter press. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, I guess his, his father used to operate one of those, you know, a long, 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 long time ago, and he wanted so cool. to he wanted to get uh, ours back up and running, so he could uh, show it to his dad before mm-hmm. he passed away. So cool. well, now, okay, was this machine in on the back wall? Uh, yes. Okay, so your and grandpa would, made would, me my last name. Okay. Um, and, and and the lead the little lead like little strip. Yep. 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 I had that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that machine went to a guy in Ohio. So cool. And his father had um, or has Alzheimer's mm-hmm. or some form of dementia, and he wanted to kind of uh, 
I, I think he wanted to to show him or or let him see one of these run again mm-hmm. before he passed. Something familiar. Yeah, and probably. I thought I thought that was so cool. That is so cool. You know, to uh-huh. be to be a part of that. Yeah. Um, oh. But I know I know you're not here to t- <laughs> oh, talk about okay. that. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's there's so many things we can get into. So, uh, you know, from uh, 2013. And I feel like it was, it happened in a blink of an eye. You were executive director at the chamber for, was it five years? Three. Three years. And then you were uh, to uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Yeah, it was actually almost three years to the date. Um, For some reason, April 20th actually is coming to me right now. And I think that's pretty close. But I remember going on spring break vacations with my family and both times I was interviewing for the Mantino job and then for the Convention and Visitors Bureau, both spring breaks, I was preparing for an interview, which was kind of funny because I had taken my laptop and I was kind of like getting everything organized from Florida. (laughs) And um, so it was almost three years to the date. And um, I've been with the CVB for five and a half years, which that does seem crazy. Um, I feel like I just started. um, I I keep thinking the same thing. And I keep thinking that you're... um your time at the Mantino chamber was longer, but I guess it really wasn't. No. <laughs> it was quicker than, you know, you've been at the, the Convention and Visitors Bureau longer. Yeah. Than, Which is crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, and I love, I love being in Mantino, you know, um, and, and I, I equally as much love um, serving the, the county in the same, a similar capacity. Well, you did such a great job with the, the chamber. I just in the, the short, you know, I started working at, uh, you know, my grandfather's print shop, Weber Printing. I started working there full time straight out of high school in 2009. Um, I guess I started working there part time in 2007. But just in that short amount of time before you came to the Mantino chamber, it was a it was quite a revolving door at the chamber. You See, know, I, that's news to me. I didn't know. I don't know a whole lot of history, to be honest with you. Um, there was there's a lot of different people that came and went as executive directors. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I think that's something important to note um, in other communities and in other you know organizations. At the time I was hired, um, the village of Mantino and the chamber both needed part time work. Um, it's hard to find someone who. Um, can commit to a part-time job, you know? And so they came together to form the full-time role, which I I think that was, I think that I I give a ton of credit to the leaders at that time um, who said, Hey, we're putting this together. And, and and now we see the fruits of that. um, Yes. Of that idea, you know, and Sarah Marion has done such a great job um, in her now five and a half years being with the the chamber and um, continues to grow and evolve. And, you know, um, Mayor Nugent always challenged me too. What what is something new we're going to do this year? And um, and you're like ah, uh. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it's a little overwhelming. But then, um, you know, then you kind of everybody gets into that mindset like um, status quo is not okay. You've I've, so many people have heard me talk about that even recently. Like we cannot be complacent. Um, we have to be changing, evolving, growing, um, creating, um, feeling inspired to do better, to do more. Um, and so I, it's just been really an honor to to work in that capacity the last eight and a half, almost nine years now. And I think it, you're bringing up how the, because what the, the village of Mantino did is they took the executive director position from the Mantino chamber. And then what did the, they call- At called, the time it was events coordinator. Events coordinator. Yep. Yes. Um, and so that's how we got like Santa, the Santa Claus event. That's how we had, you know, the, the concerts on Main Street. Um That at the time was like, whoa, what are we doing? You know, Mm -hmm. and I was like, and let's let them drink beer, you know, and uh, it it (laughs) is. Yeah. And so um, I did get some uh, definitely like, what are you what are you smoking today? (laughs) But she's on that. Yeah, something. But, um, you know, it's been such a cool opportunity. And now we see other communities do it throughout the county. Um, Giving people an opportunity just to kick back and relax with their friends or family. 
what I love so much about going to the these types of events is seeing also the reunions too. It's hey, I haven't seen you in so long. I particularly like this year, right? We haven't seen each other. We lost two years of our whole life. I right. feel like, and then you kind of forget that you're like, oh yeah, it's been <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in the last month, we have actually gathered um, professionally more so than we had in since um, February 2020. And um, to be in the room with friends and colleagues again has been pretty powerful. Um, we, we definitely lose that sense of people um, and community and relationship when we are on Zoom calls or in, in my spare bedroom working out of the CVB office, you know, for eight months. So Yeah, yeah. I guess um, getting back to what I was saying about combining uh, those two positions from the Mantino chamber and then the village of Mantino, I think the reason why it was the, the executive director position at the Mantino chamber of commerce was such a revolving door was because it was a, a part time position. Mm-hmm. And usually the person that was filling that spot had a full time gig elsewhere that would take up most of their time. So it was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, I, and you know. I can see that being the case. Um, it's yeah. hard to it's hard to serve in a part time capacity if um, it's it's not always the perfect fit, you know. And um, especially for something that's so intense, like being as an executive director of a chamber or being a, a part of a village, you're about you should be focusing solely on the growth. Absolutely. Of- <laughs> well, and look at Sarah now. I mean. She has um, another team member to help her do her work. Um, I think something in nonprofits that um, is not just just not just happening in our community, but the nonprofit world, it's small but mighty teams asked to do a great big task. And um, it's so important to continue to um, encourage team members and employees of those nonprofits um, and equip them with the tools that they need to do their jobs. Um, it's just, it is uh, public service, and um, you know we do it for the love of the community. And um, but I, I, but again, it's it's great to see people answer the call and answer the the need to to really do the job and equip people to do it well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you were uh, applying um, or interviewing to be the new uh, executive director for the Kankakee County Convention and Visitors Bureau, I know Larry Williams had suddenly passed, who was the director beforehand. And I got to know him through the print shop as well. He was a funny guy. Um, We always uh, got along well anytime I'd get to meet him because the the Convention and Visitors Bureau would print stuff at the print shop, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'd talk with him. um, And when his his death came about, it was certainly very sad. I was very, very sorry to, to, to hear that. And I'm sure you had worked... Uh, with him being a part of the chamber. Yeah. You know. um, I had worked with Larry and, um, you know, we had done a billboard together. I th- when I was with Mantino, I was like, hey, let's put a billboard on the interstate and um, attract people here. Mm-hmm. And he was all about it. So we worked on that project together. And then um, the summer before he passed, I actually had um, done some television interviews for him with the Chicago Burst Training Camp. And I had been downtown to do some radio interviews Um representing the community. Um, I don't know if he was well at the time, but I was I was able to serve in that, um, kind of on that committee to help tell the story. Um, so when he passed and then ultimately the job position had been posted, um, I, I remember taking long walks um, and having conversations with uh, myself and with Larry saying, tell me what to do here. Um, I, I don't know if this is the right fit. Is it the right step? Um, you know, because then, um, yeah, just what, being what sensitive made, to the yeah, circumstances. Right. So what made you decide to take that that jump? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> you know, I, I just knew it was a, um, a bigger opportunity, um, an opportunity to serve a, a larger community of people. Um, so that was really kind of what was it. I, I felt really... Um, I felt really satisfied and, and proud of the work I'd done in Mantino. And it wasn't that I didn't like it. Um, this was just a, a little bit different and a little bit bigger platform to to do the work that I was, um, I knew I was capable of doing. Absolutely. I mean, so the, that was it. Yeah. It, it was the, the, the transformation that you applied to the Mantino chamber. Uh, it, it paved the way for Sarah to grow it even further, mm-hmm. you know. 
and then you were able to take your skills to uh, even better, just better the county. I hope so. so. I hope <laughs> yeah. that. Um... I mean, I know there's there's been, uh, you know, there's always controversies. You're never going to make everybody happy. There's always going to be someone that doesn't like what you do. Yeah, but there's but, more people that do, Jake. So, you're right. So I've decided, um, <laughs> looking forward and moving forward, um, the voices in the room, um, the voices on social media, the people that are encouraged and inspired to make Kankakee County a better place to live, work, and visit, um, those are the people that I keep in my corner. Those yeah. are the people that make a difference in my world. Well, and the ones that do make a difference, uh, you know, they they want to they want to talk with you, they want to work with you, they want to mm-hmm. um, uh, inject something positive, you know, into whatever it is that you're doing, or they're saying, "Hey, I'm doing this thing. Could we possibly work 100%. together?" You yep. know, yeah, partnership and like I am a relationship person. I if someone calls and I can coordinate to other people to help with the project. Um, that is, that makes my heart sing, um, to be able to connect people. And, um, you know, Kankakee County is, I've gotten to know so many incredible people and so many organizations doing great work and museums and attractions and all the things that we get to promote. And, um, those people are, are proud to be here. They're proud to work with the CVB and, um, it's really cool. So let's, uh, let's get, get into a little history about the Convention and Visitors Bureau, when did it start? Ooh, 1983, I believe. We celebrated 36 or 37 years um, recently in April, I believe it is. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been here for close to four decades, you know, doing doing the mission, the, the, the work of the mission. So, so what exactly I, I feel like some people and even myself, I don't know everything that the the Convention and Visitors Bureau is actually doing. I mean, I know there's a lot more than meets the eye. So what are some of the things that the Convention and Visitors Bureau actually does besides, uh, per se, let's say, distributing brochures about Kankakee yeah. County? You know well, what I mean? It's it's more than just It is. That. And you're laughing. So I want the community to know he's laughing when he says, is this the only thing we do? And I know well, it's I'm going to come across the table here pretty quick. I know I'm teething. <laughs> Um, But you know what? In all honesty, um, the work that Convention and Visitors Bureaus do is really a lot outside of the county, right? So the mission is to attract um, visitors to to join us for a day or for an overnight. Um, And so a lot of the work that we do, um, especially in recent years, um, well, actually, in recent years, it's been a little quiet. But overall, the work of the Convention and Visitors Bureau has been... um, digital marketing, doing some content distribution. Um, We had a huge role with the Chicago Bears training camp and a huge partnership with them. Um, Something really cool from that was um, Project Catalyst that you had Lisa Wogan and team in recently. I'm to talk about that. That developer was at an event that the CVB paid for and hosted. Um, And then we hand them off to the Alliance, who hands them off then to the different communities to interview them. And now we've got a $45 million project in Kankakee. Um, so that is some of the work that we do. Um, you mentioned the guide, which is great timing because we're actually in the middle of that revision right now. Um, anybody in graphic design, um, anybody in publications, even in print, right, knows that that product, that that magazine, that that, that holy grail of Kanki County, that doesn't just appear. Um, we are um, researching. We're doing photography. We're writing content. Um, we're assembling a package that is really um, the cell sheet for Kankakee County, all of the things. That's a really, really huge task. Um, I hired a new team this past summer, August, July and August, and um, that has been the single project that Megan, my marketing coordinator, has been working on since August, the one thing. And um, we are about two-thirds of the way done, um, so that should be launching soon. But, um, you know, in terms of marketing, it's just telling our story and getting out to to, to different people in different capacities and different ways um, is it just print? No, everybody looks at content differently, right? So yeah. it's digital, print, Especially video. Especially this day and age, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then to um, pivoting into sales too. What is our region? Um, you know, are we a big convention center? No, we're not. Um, we aren't Tinley Park Convention Center. We're not downtown Chicago, um, McCormick Place. So what can we do to um, peddle the services and the attractions and the venues that we have um, 
on hand also to consider, you know, what, what do we need? What can we have moving forward? Um, and then we help sell that product and um, motor coach sales, you know, um, group travel. There's a ton that we that we're getting back into the groove. Um, and, and, and hopefully we'll uh, yeah, we're going to launch some good stuff spring 2022. So in, in, in your your research since, you know, July and August on <clears throat> creating the new guide, what are some of the things that you've discovered for the first time or just maybe uh, discovered new things about a, a popular destination in Kankakee County that yeah. wasn't? Um, gosh, you know, I, I'm going to actually answer that in two ways. One is I've been here for five and a half years. So I, I know most of the things that are happening. Um, the things I don't are awesome to learn. And we have learned some of those going into the revision. It was like, man, post COVID post bears, like the bulk of this book is going to be wrong. You know, restaurants closing, opening, you name it. Um, there's, but then through COVID and um, there have been people who have started businesses, um, splitting targets, for example, in Kankakee on um, right right next to Tiny Tap, you know. Yes. Um, there are people doing things. Um, there are people pivoting and doing great work. Um, there are restaurants opening. There are restaurants thriving that have pivoted. There's clothing boutiques have um, shifted to online in lieu of the in-store opportunities that they that were, were taken from them. Um, so... The coolest part for the guide is the stories that are behind the businesses. And our group has the opportunity to learn those stories and um, and see what's happening and be able to tell them to the best in the best way that we can, you know. What's one of your favorite stories of of one of those businesses that you mentioned? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. You know, Christy Smith is someone um, who is in a uh, women's clothing boutique. She has taken a vision, um, I don't want to say a hobby, but like a passion, right? And transformed it into um, now two retail stores, um, has shifted from that in-store purchase into a Wednesday night live doing all these online sales and all these cool things. Um, The Majestic, I would say, too, in general, um, putting businesses together, um, assembling an experience, right? in our world, the experience is the sell for us. It's not just a store. People won't just come um, to visit one thing, right, typically. Um, how can we sell an entire experience? And um, Adventure Commons is another one. Um, you know, they were able to still host athletic events and still host things for the community. Um, and then also now we're getting back into hosting gymnastics meets and, and a lot of different stuff. So um, our partners have been resilient and um, and passionate for the work that they do. So a couple of my stories. Okay. And Stafari, you know, like Stafari is my favorite place in the whole world. Oh, I, so. yeah. I think everyone loves loves Stafari. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to go to. And I feel like they're the ones that um, kind of helped uh, create the other uh, coffee uh, uh coffee uh, bars or cafes that yeah. we have now uh, surrounding it. I feel like they kind of, they kind of paved that way. They're kind of like um, after, after uh, what they've been, they've been open for at least five years or longer. Probably um, pretty close. But I think after being open, you know, for a couple of years or three years or whatever, I feel like there were other people, other business uh, leaders in the area and being like, Oh, like, this you, is this is working. It is. You know? Well, and I think um I think our culture um like we have to be okay working remote. We have to be okay working from a coffee shop. Those are ha- those things are happening all over the country, yeah. all over the world right now. Yes. Um it gives Kankakee County an opportunity to um kind of establish a new normal. Um it is totally okay to see people working um in all different venues. Um Taryn Tooper and I had a conversation years ago, years ago, years ago, when I think I was still with Mantino and we were talking about grapes and hops at the time. And, um, you know, he said something really great. And it was like, we don't just need one wine bar. We need three. We, you know, um, we don't need one of anything. It doesn't make the experience. We need people to, um, 
jump from town to town. Um, you know, in the Tri-City area, Kankakee, Kank, uh, Bradley, Bourbonnais, nobody knows where village and city limits are when they're visiting. We want people to work together. We want to be able to tell um, the story of an experience. Um, head over to Moments to Cranky Mike's Popcorn Shop or get to Mantino to um, PJ's Ice Cream, one of my favorite places, you know. Yes. Um, Bourbon A Sweet Street, for example, um, yep. new owners. Uh, we didn't lose that cool business. We've Thank got goodness. New, new, um, you know, new new ideas and new things happening with that. So, um, I think it's just super cool to see people come together and work together and feel inspired by one business to create another. Yeah. So. So with the the new the, the new team you have assembled. Um, you know, besides completely revamping this guide because of, you know, the loss of the bears. And I know that's that was a, a big loss, but it's still something that we have to tote, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's still something we can say, hey, for 18 years. We were the know, home in the Chicago Bears summer camp. And here's yeah. the thing, too. And, um, you know, when I think it was Lee called me provost from the Daily Journal when they, the news had broke that they were leaving. Yeah. The reality is the things that we promote didn't leave. Um, we did, we promoted the Kankakee River State Park. We cr- promoted Perry Farm and all the businesses, the museums, the attractions, the experiences, right? Those things didn't change. Um, Bears was the hook for us to get people here. And for 18 years, we had the privilege to um, be attached to an NFL program. And for, for all of those years, all of those fans now know where Bourbonnet, Bear Bonnet is. They know where Kankakee County is. Um they likely stayed in a Bradley hotel because of Chicago Bears training camp, dined at a restaurant in a lo- another town. Um, you know, so Bears camp was great. Um, but, you know, and, and honestly, the guide, uh, we redo that every 18 months anyway. So it was just good timing. Um, but the team is, um, I'm excited, you know. Um, we had great people um, on our team before COVID. Um, we've got a, a new team Um that came on July and August, Nicole Gavin, who I don't know if you know. Yes, her. I know Nicole. Nicole came back to the CVB. Um, oh, I didn't realize. I, I know. She was the- with us previously, like maybe 2019. Um, and then she took a short hiatus and then she came back. Um, so Nicole serves as our office and retail operations manager, manager, excuse me. Um, so Nicole manages like she can, she's, she does all the things, jack of all trades, but um, her focus really will be, um, on that visitor experience and then the retail shop. So right prior to COVID, we opened this retail store and we had such a great response from the community, um, a huge response from travelers. Hey, you know, all the products that we sell in the store, um, we're directing people to experience the attraction or the business that was attached to that product. That's right. I forgot about that. So super cool. Um, So she's hard at work um, creating a new product list to open when we get into that Project Catalyst uh, incubator building. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's supposed to be your new. That'll that'll be our new um, brick and mortar. The old Midland States Bank on on Skyler. So, So Nicole joined the team in July. Um, you know, I gave her fair warning when she started, you're walking into just a mess, right? (laughs) Boxes, um, just storage units. I, you know, I'm a mess, like help, you know, like S O S. And she took the challenge on, um, 110% like she always does. And, um, and got the organ, the office organized and, and kind of Jake, honestly, like when you take a two year hiatus, um, it is. It's difficult to, um, and I, and it's not the way that I work to just get back into business. We're rebuilding the foundation. Um, we're est- reestablishing relationships. We're get, we're gathering data. We're updating content. We're fixing the website that's so grossly outdated. Um, so, so all that's happening as we speak. At about six, it, is about, it will be about a six month project. Um, and then Kathy Lee joined our team as a sales manager. So Kathy is also rewriting the, the manual on sales, right? Um, everything that we knew previous to COVID, um, the tourism industry was the hardest hit industry in the whole the world. I mean, that's that's a that's a fact. Um, it's a fact that we have to recognize locally that there was a huge impact to that industry. Um, so she is building new relationships with um, rights holders, with event people who are interested in joining um, or, or having an event here. Um, I've tasked Kathy with a really difficult um, project. Um, here you go, you know, make, grow this baby um, and then see where we end up, you know? And so um, 
She is traveling. Um, she's attending trade shows. She's traveling to other CVBs to see how they are doing it. Um, I think examples um, are, are our CVB world in, in the state of Illinois is so incredible. Um, they want to help. And um, while we're all competitors, we're also all friends. And we want to see the others succeed. And so she, um, she's she got a, a big task in front of her, but um, she's, she's up to the challenge. And I know she is. Um, Kathy is, I would say, um, she's always been in the hospitality industry, but she's got an incredible story where she grew up in California. And then after college was like, Mom, Dad, I'm moving to Chicago. And she did. And um, and then she found herself here in Kankakee County and has set up home here um, and uh, is starting a life of her own. So in some ways, Kathy is a visitor to the community, too. And so it's been really cool to teach her and um, educate her on all of the things. And then um, our, our, our marketing coordinator is Megan Massey. Uh, Megan is fresh out of college and, um, like I said, has ta- taken on this task of the visitor guide. And it's like... Wow. Um, in, in some ways, it's great because she gets to learn all of the things that she's going to market for the next, you know, as long as as long as she's on our team. And um, so it's been a great like, what's the saying? Death by fire. <laughs> like jump yeah. into the uh, jump into, <laughs> jump the, into the, the burning pit. flames. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. She's learning all the things. So um, and then our other team member is Mylene Joins, who is our finance manager. Mylene's a contractor. So she comes in. Comes in when she needs to, and when and she Mylene can. is retired from uh, the Bourbon A uh, Fire Department. She right? is Mylene's another jack of all trades. God love her. She is um, Bourbon A Fire Department. She currently works with Riverside Ambulance. She is an accountant by trade. Uh, worked for Bourbon A Township Park District for years, and now um, enjoys um, her grandkids and traveling and uh, doing some accounting here and there. Um, along the way. So we're really blessed to have Mylene. She's been with us for four and a half years now. Okay. Um, so she's been a great um, teammate to have on board. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, but we've got a great team. Um, Lori Sear is our board chair right now. Dave Barron's vice chair. Uh, Tim Nugent's our treasurer. And then Jim Johannick, representing the County Chamber of Commerce, is our secretary. And then just a great board right now who's all you know, a lot of them have weathered the storm in the last two years, and um, we have some new faces who are also advocates for the organization as well. So we've got a good group moving forward. I can't imagine just thinking about the how hard it is for all the Convention and Visitors Bureau in Illinois just because of the stigma that's attached to Illinois about, you know— uh, moving to Indiana, it's cheaper taxes, yada, yada, you know, but there's so many great things in Kankakee County. And I know, especially, you know, Tim Nugent with being part of the Economic Alliance, he's always bringing up constantly about um, all the the manufacturing jobs that are actually in the county. Mm -hmm. And it's, we always refer to the heyday of Kankakee when there was a ton of manufacturing jobs back, you know, 50s, 60s, you know, that kind of thing. But it's actually like, well, there's actually a ton right now. Yeah. You know, if you if you open it up and you and you actually look around, there's quite a few. I, I don't know the exact numbers in my head, but I know I should because I was just at the Alliance meeting last week and um, Tim and his team, you know, um, continually remind the business community um that there are jobs. There is a thriving manufacturing community. Um, Food manufacturing is, is also thriving. Um, You know, so the convention and visitors bureaus role um, in that whole like workforce, you know, work environment is um, to get someone to move to Kankakee County. They have to visit. It, It all starts with a visit and that's our job um, to, to attract people to consider visiting before they live and work. And, you know, I have this, um, there's an industry saying, if you build a place where people want to visit, you build a place where people need to work, want to work where business needs to be. Um, and then you're back to the whole, you know, I call it the circle of life. Um, yep. but man, what was the number? I can't ever remember, but um, I, I wish I, I know it was not that long ago. It was, I know it was in, in, you know, um, Rob West at the Valley had, had it in his newscast and I, I can't, he had a, you know, an audio clip from Tim and I can't remember the number, but mm-hmm. still just is stressing, uh, that there are a, a lot of manufacturing 
jobs here, among many other things. Absolutely. Obviously. There's a, there's a lot going on. Um, one campaign that, um, you know, a lot of our CVB partners across the state um, are doing is a relocate campaign. And so that's something that's on our radar too. Um, there's great amenities here. Um, you know, we've got two different opinions when it comes to our, our geography too, where we're located. Ooh, we don't want to be attached to Chicago or, oh, we're 45 minutes away. Um, I often remind people we are exactly who we need to be in whatever conversation we are. We can be rural, but we can also be a suburb, right? Yes. So if someone is looking to commute, I did it for five years. Um, that we're 45 minutes away from, um, you know, one of the biggest cities in the world um, with great transportation to get there, plane, train, bus, automobile. Um, or we can enjoy the rural agricultural heritage that we, um, that we enjoy living here. Um, and sometimes that's really nice to to be both, you know? Yep. So So what are some of the other plans that are in the works that you can actually discuss? Yeah. You know, with? Um, we have a team meeting. To be truthful, Jake, we have literally just been getting acclimated to getting the, the getting our foundation built again underneath of us. So we have a team meeting next week actually to look at 2022 and say, okay, how are we going to spread our wings now that we have um now that we've got everything back a little bit more on track. So um, you've probably noticed we've been super quiet on social media. Yes. Um, in our world, if you drive people to a website that's inaccurate, what is the point, right? So um, that was a question I received early on. Are you doing social media? And for a long time, I was a one-woman show. Um, so you um, establish boundaries with also your personal self going through a really cr crisis environment in our world. And I can only do so much, you know? And so um, I made the choice to slow down our social media until we had a good product to drive people to, which is the website. Um, so that will be launching. Um, we've got a meeting next week to kick that campaign off too. Um, so you can expect social media back in a great big way. Um, we are going to launch a spring campaign um, to just get people back in, interested and invite them to visit Kankakee County again. Um, that will be multifaceted. That, that campaign's not been nailed down. Um, but we're in the process of doing that now. Um, the visitor guide will launch. The um, the store will launch again, um, bigger and better, and more um, definitely more product to get people out and about. Um, gosh, what else, Jake? Yeah, I guess we should mention. So you know the the old office was in Mantino. Uh, yeah, we were the there. Gosh, that lease. I, okay, funny story. I was hosting the Christmas party for Mantino Chamber that December whatever year, 2020, 12, 2012, excuse me. And Larry was there um, celebrating the holidays with us. And he said, Hey, Stacy, we're moving the CVB office to, to Mantino. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yes, you know, like <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, Cause I was obviously advocating for Mantino at the time. And so yeah. two weeks prior to me starting um, the job, um, the team at that time moved the office into Mantino. So I walked into boxes like, okay, what's next? Um, mm -hmm. So we were able to get that office up and running. So we were there for, um, gosh, 2016 to 2020. Yeah. So four years. And, you know, our partnership with Municipal Bank, with Kathy Boykin, was incredible. Um, she um, she she helped us in a at a, in a time when we needed um, we needed a partnership. And um, and she definitely answered that call, that cry for help. So um, we then shifted everything into two storage units. Uh, we being me and the mouse in my pocket and a team of movers. <laughs> Um, so we put everything in a storage unit and I operated out of my house, uh, which is a, a whole other thing, you know, cause you're working out of your home too, um, for the podcast at least. But, um, wow, that's a thing that you're not always prepared for. Yeah. I um, can relate. <laughs> yeah. At first I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And then it was like, oh, this is not great. <laughs> um, then I kind of got into the groove of it. But so we operated from my home, um, October to July. Um, and then in May, you know, it was time for a new budget, new fiscal year and the executive committee and the, and the board said, Hey, green light, let's go, let's get back on track. We have work to do. So, um, we found a, a location in downtown Kankakee for a temporary office. We went to, we, we went out for hiring three new team members. Um, we moved in, they started and it has been fast and furious since day one. Um, that was part of their hiring promise from me. We have no time to waste. And so um, 
the new um, the Project Catalyst, the incubator building at Midland States Bank, which is super cool because we helped bring them to the community, right? Yes. Um, so Lisa Wogan and Brian Loft and Josh Jeffers and their team um, with the team at the city under you know Barbie Brewer Watson and. Um, it's just been cool. It'll be it'll be really exciting to be there. Where um, I'm actually touring the new team, my team, on Monday, so they can see the space. They've not seen it. Um, it you know, it's under construction or right. Um, I, I was going to say as is. Um, yeah. But they needed to just. We can't design a store if we don't know what the space looks like. And so we have a a, a rendering, which I'm super excited about. Um, 600 square feet, maybe a little bit more um, of retail space. So wow. Okay. Yeah. We um, and we'll be on the um, farmers market corner, um, first floor. So we will essentially um, be welcoming anybody to the incubator building, um, encouraging people to come in to shop, um, and helping just really the mission of that incubator project to bring people into Kankakee County into that building um, to inspire hospitality and tourism industry, inspire culinary. Um, Young, young and old people of all ages to be entrepreneurs and be creative. Um, you know me; I'm willing to take risks on anything, and I hope I can inspire people to um, think outside the box when it comes to their business, um, and help us add to the inventory of things to talk about. I, I think the the store is such a great idea. It reminds me of the um, the times that my so my oldest brother Josh he lives in in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, when him and his his wife come to town, uh, well, I guess at this time it was then his girlfriend uh, some years back, they were wanting to bring back some type of unique memorabilia. Yeah, memorabilia or or just some type of unique gift, whether mm-hmm. it was some like popcorn or, you know, whatever it was. Yep. And so they were asking me, like, where can we go for something unique? And I don't think the store existed at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, But the fact that there'll be a store that uh, someone can direct someone to if they're looking for that something uniquely made in Kankakee County, they can just go to that store and they can be introduced to whoever, you know, if it's Cranky Mike's or if it's whatever. All of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that store, um, we were actually wearing the T-shirt, the Happy Camper T-shirt I'm wearing oh, today. Oh, I, I remember that. We were wearing it at Chicago Bears training camp. Um, it was a spin on, hey, we're all at training camp, right? Um, you can be, um, you can camp in Kankakee County. And and overall, like, just, like, vibe, right? Let's just be happy campers and be happy and positive and we're excited to be here. And someone, multiple people asked, where can we buy that T-shirt? And I was like, oh, my gosh, we have an opportunity here. So, um we started selling the shirts and then all of a sudden we pivoted and um, everything in the store was designed specifically for the store. Um, you can't find it anywhere else. Okay. And so that's what is, is also Is it going to really be like cool. that again yeah. or is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and obviously too, wanting to be very respectful of our other retail partners. Um, we want to drive people, like going back to Terrence's comment years ago, we don't just need one retail shop. We need a couple because then you've got an experience. So we want to be an addition, a complement to the existing businesses, um, to the existing attractions that we're driving people to experience. Um, but yeah, we've got, Nicole's got some good stuff cooking up for the store. So so is that where you might team up with like, I don't know, like Connect Roasters and make a special coffee that's only available there? Yeah. That like, kind of thing? Absolutely. So like oh, a great example is um, Brickstone. So Brickstone always sells glassware that is replicated from their can, right? Of yeah. The, the, the can of beer. Right. So we actually asked them to create a can using our brand colors specifically just for Kankakee County. And so Brickstone rose to the occasion and, and created this one of a kind glass that looks just like their gl- other glassware for all their cans. Um, but you can only find it in our community. Um, the the the, 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 store, the, the segue yeah. is go and enjoy a craft beer at award winning Illinois made maker Brickstone Brewery. Um, and similar for yeah, all of those different products that we would have. Um, mm-hmm. We'll package it in a creative way. You're, I don't want to give everything away. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> but that is something um, that's super top of mind for us. Um, Again, relationships. How can we package things and yeah. uh, present them? You know, something really cool is, um, you know, you kind of mentioned it too with your brother coming into town and wanting a, uh, just a memento, a, a gift to give someone. Um, we have had in the past um, 
corporate partners say, hey, we've got a VIP coming in or we need um, we need a board of directors holiday gift. Um, realtors, welcome to Kankakee County. Welcome home. Um, we have bankers who are congratulating people on home sales. Um, so there's a lot of people who have um, been able to really be creative. Airbnb users, they at our at our liquidation sale in the last, gosh, a year and a half ago now, two years ago, no, a year, yes, um, they bought all the glassware because that was cool. They could put in their Airbnbs. Um, the guides are in, you know, hotel rooms. So it's super cool. It's okay. super cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, we're getting close to time. So is there... you were right. Time flies. <laughs> I, I was like, what am I going to talk it about does... for an hour? <laughs> we could go on for another we hour. We, we really could. There's so much to talk about. Oh, man, um, what else? Yeah. What else do you really want to capture in this episode that you want people to know mm. about the Kankakee County Convention and Visitors Bureau? Gosh, um, a couple things. One, um, invitation to you specifically, too. But um, I don't know when the, the audience is going to see this, but we're hosting a meet and greet. Next week, Wednesday morning, the 17th of November, um, f- just to meet the team officially. We haven't, it's like our first public appearance. Um, you know, we've kind of been treading water, getting everybody on board and acclimated. Um, we'll offer offer some office tours. And then, um, so there's that. Um, look forward to great things to come in 2022, the spring. Um, obviously, campaigns launching into spring, summer travel season. Um, we're going to be hard at work getting that work accomplished. Um, and then, man, oh, man, um, I guess one other thing, too, um, that was a hot topic this week that I'd like to just kind of, like, touch on, too, um, because I, I wear another hat, and that is the chairperson, chairwoman of the Kenki Riverfront Society. Oh, yes, that's right. We wanted to talk. See, yeah, there's so many things so to talk and about. And I'll be quick. So, yeah, where, where, where is the Riverfront? Yeah, just explain yeah. the Riverfront project. The project <clears throat> is um, is progressing, and I'm so excited about it. Um Similar to the CVB's work outside of the community promoting tourism, um, the work behind the scenes being done by the Kankakee Riverfront Society, the board of directors, um, the city of Kankakee, the Kankakee Valley Park District. Um, this is the this is the fourth time I have presented or talked about um, the Riverfront project this week. Um, last night, we had a great opportunity to gather at the Frank Lloyd Wright House to talk to city council, to park district commissioners about um, investing in the future of the organization. And so, um, the first project is what we call the East River Walk at the corner of River and Skyler, um, right there on the, on the, right by that apartment, by Yannickies. Um, so that is happening. That is, um, in final design and engineering to become the first transformative project in, um, in the Riverwalk master plan. And so things are super, super, um, exciting and they're very much real and they're very much happening um, when I started, so this is where my roles um, complement each other so well. Um, when I first started with the CVB, Lee Provost asked me, what is the most underutilized, um, undermarketed asset we've got in Kankakee County? I was young, like naive. I had no idea what I was talking about. Um, I said the Kankakee River, like without even really thinking. It just came out of my, like just duh, you know, like yeah. most totally underused um, resource we've got. And so to be able to um, kind of, all, you know, and um, former Mayor Walls Armstrong, Mayor Curtis has in, um, embraced the project. Um, the coolest part about that whole project is the longevity of it, right? Can, uh, the project's not going to happen overnight. Naperville Riverwalk celebrated 50 years this this year. Um, you see that project, right? It's, yes, it, it, it's it, it, gorgeous. I mean, I, I Rome can't, was not built in a day. No, it wasn't. And and so many people, I can't tell you, I've encountered, they talk about all oh, the Naperville Riverwalk is so gorgeous and Mm -hmm. it's so cool to visit and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, we've got one of the, we've got one of the most beautiful rivers in Illinois. It's on the federal clean streams. It's on the national water trail. Yeah. Um, You know, and you nailed it too. We want people to visit the river to experience it. So what attractions, amenities, experiences at the riverfront, that's what's so awesome about this opportunity. We have the a opportunity um, to play offense on what we get to, d- what we decide goes there, right? What attractions are going to be cool? And I say cool because it has to be cool. Um, <laughs> people want to visit. Like you drive to Naperville Riverwalk to experience A, B, C, and D. Um, your family can go. Your girls' girls' weekends can go. Um, and it's not just Naperville; it's it's Riverwalks across the world. Um, 
there's an element of tourism that then helps bolster and improve the quality of life for the residents. Then you see sales tax and increase. Then you see real estate tax increase. It all starts with a visit, and the riverfront is no different. So um, I'm super excited. Um, what are some, just real quick, mm-hmm. what are, are some of those amenities that For are me, going to be at the, I mean, I'm sure let me everything's. Ask you. Let me ask okay. you that question. So, the, okay, so the East Riverwalk project is, yeah. gonna, is going to include, um, it's not going to be the biggest and best, you know, project along the whole four-mile stretch. I was going to say, because... I, I know that's been the focus because that's going to be the first part, but this is going to go. It's going to hopefully go to the hospital campuses. Okay. Through park district property, city property. Um, the city is acquiring land and they have been for the past year um, and, or, or more to then, you know, have the opportunity to then develop those projects there. Um, the East River Walk will have um, a boat dock and ADA accessible um, portage for kayaks. Um, it will have. Um, a little bit of a pavilion overlooking so people can just eat lunch. They can picnic. They can, um, the kids can run on the grass lawn. Um, trying to preserve the um, boathouse that is there in some capacity. There's a really beautiful stone arch that the community, because we've done a ton of community outreach, the community wants to see those items preserved, certainly. Um, so we're going to try to preserve those. Um, and then just an opportunity for people to just enjoy, right? It's a, it's a corner that's super highly trafficked. Um parking lot um, that could be, you know, pivot from parking lot to food truck place, you know, like set, you know, whatever. Um, So there's really cool things in the works there. I'm anxious to see um, what the design team, you know, for final design and engineering, where we land. Um, But that land was acquired through an OSLAD grant. So um, construction, there is a timeline and it is drawing near and um, the city's on board. The park district is on board, not for this project particularly, but um, in general, um, the leadership at those, watching the park district and the city come together um, and work together has been really an incredible um, experience for me to watch and be a part of. Uh, Riverfront Society is is that non-for-profit arm that's not government. Mm-hmm. Um, we know how government works. I was a part of government. I work with government all day, every day. Um, but the nonprofit gives, gives us the opportunity to raise those funds, right, to... Um, establish programming, to establish um, quality of work, quality of place, um, place making, all of the things that are the buzzwords. Um, that's what the that's what the KRS, that's our job. We want to be that 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 teammate that um, is the full time staff member, team member um, leading the effort. Um, but my question to you is, what amenities do you want to see at the riverfront that would appeal to people to go enjoy well, I feel, while they're there. I feel like kind of like with what was talked about uh, when Lisa Wogan was here and, and Barbie and, and Dave and Nicole, uh, you know, they were talking about that incubator space to be um, <sighs> interchangeable, so to speak, just because things change over time, trends change, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I feel like however the riverfront is developed, it has to be able to change with the times. Mm -hmm. I I know that might sound very vague, but I feel like that's just important, Mm -hmm. you know, because things, like I said, trends change, you know, like today, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I know like for instance, Frozen yogurt was a huge thing for a while, right? Mm-hmm. I don't hear much about frozen yogurt anymore. So, what do you hear about now? Like, what would drive you and your family to the riverfront for an afternoon? I mean, this is pretty simple. Um, I just l- would love the fact of of having that that same literally walkway, like Naperville has, that you can walk right along the river. You know, and and enjoy, you know, enjoy being that close to the river, obviously in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. Um, That's pretty simple. I know that's something that's going to be there. But that alone, I feel like, is just a a comforting. Yeah. And safety, too, is definitely a component. Um, And, and, and of course, the design team is this is not their first river walk rodeo, if you will. Um, But, you know, like I want to see a coffee shop. Yes. I want to see. Perhaps a kayak, um, you know, Reed's Rental is a great kayak outfitter, but maybe there's a satellite, maybe maybe the pickup is along the riverfront. Um, a wine, a rooftop wine bar, how, well, maybe we call it the landing, right? Um, <laughs> right? I love, um, I'd love to see um, 
property go up? Literally. Um, give me a four-story, cool loft, multi-use experience, um, great green space so people can like walk and, and spend time there. We know when people walk, like look at downtown Kankakee, look at bike lanes throughout the community. It's a fact that when people are walking and biking, they spend more money and they spend more time in the community. So when we are um, thinking of forward progress, those have to be considered. Um, one of my part, one of my colleagues said to me, and it was so candid and I loved it. We're talking about bike lanes. And he said, you'll never see me on a bike lane, but I know they need to exist. They need to be there for the community members that use them. And I'm, t- I'm, I'm sort of to the point where it's like, get on board with progress. Everybody, like, Let's do this together. Let's um, let's, it all let's remove somewhere. our blinders and let's start looking big picture. Right. Um, it all and we're starts seeing somewhere. that. Yeah. We're seeing that um, all over the place. You know, Mantino has enhanced their trail system. Um, Bradley is investing in their, you know, Hitchcock Design Group for some streetscaping too. Bourbon A. Have you seen the new signage that Bourbon A? I'm going to shout out to Lori Sear right now because these are her signs. She has done such a great job. Um, wayfinding signage in the in the village of Riverdale. Kankakee is expanding their streetscape. Um, Grant Park, I think, is investing in streetscape. Like people are doing stuff. Yes, and I know there's there was some <clears throat> uh, some flack from those you know bur- all those Bourbon A signs around. The thing is, I feel like some don't understand that in order to attract new people whether it's just visitors or whether it's new residents, the t- the place has to look beautiful. It does. And I mean, just think about the towns that you love to have day trips in or go on vacations to. They're most likely beautiful, right? That's, they, look, that's, they look nice, like a nice place to live. And, and that's why you like going to them, right? Mm-hmm. I know one of my favorite places to go is New Buffalo, Michigan. Uh, I, I used this example <laughs> in my, a conversation recently. Like, why do you go to New Buffalo? I love the, the cute little downtown with all the little shops. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can walk around and you know, obviously they've got the lakefront right there. Yeah. We've got the riverfront. We have and we can, all of the things. Yeah, and we can we can and build, you know, the the cute little walkways and the shops and, the, yeah. you know, so it's yeah. just that's why I like visiting there. But do you think if they didn't invest into beautification, do you think they would still have the same draw? No, they would not. No, because the businesses <laughs> wouldn't want to be there. No, the businesses wouldn't want to be there. And the it tourism just, wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be know? it wouldn't be eye catching either. It no. just wouldn't feel very. Yeah. You know, comforting. Yeah. You want to feel, um, you know, we can't complain about people leaving the state or the communities that we work in um, if we're not going to do anything to change it. And I and I think a, an easy layup is that mm-hmm. um, give us give the community a beautiful place to live. And um, and I think we're seeing that. And, and a lot of our communities have done that and have invested in that. And so yes. um, that helps tourism, too. Um, years ago, I was driving. um into Bears training camp. And I, my perspective is that of a visitor, right? So I'm, ex- I'm driving down the interstates, I'm exiting exits. And I think to myself, oh man, like look at the grass, literally just look at the grass. So I, I wrote a letter to the whole community and I said, companies coming, coming. When you have people to your house, what do you do? You tidy up, Mm -hmm. you clean the yard up, you clean the house up, you hide the dishes in the stove, you know, (laughs) you do all the things. But we (laughs) should be doing that every single day. Anytime a corporate traveler comes to work in the community for the week or whatever, um, or someone's stopping for gas, that is our opportunity to impress them. We only get one first impression. Let's make it a good one. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a good way to close, I think. think Jake, this was awesome. Thanks so much. No, thank you, Stacey, so much for your time. This was great. Um, And yeah, big things to come from uh, Kankakee County Convention and Visitors Bureau in 2022. Yeah, I'm pumped. (laughs) All right. Well, that closes out this episode of Kankakee Podcast. I'm Jake Lamore. You can catch up on previous episodes at kankakeepodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is that you get your podcasts. And you can follow us for updates on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, 
and uh, also our, our Facebook group as well. Um, you can find all those things at Kankakee Podcast. Uh, and our theme song is by Lupe Carroll. People tend 